What's going on here in the Beat Sessions? I am your host, Mitchell Weary. The Luffler Brothers, otherwise known as Chevelle, are back with a brand new record called Neurotius. That came out on March 5th. It's their ninth studio record, first in about five years. And I'm going to preface this review by saying that Chevelle is one of those bands that I never gave credit where credit was due. And I'm sorry for it. But in my defense, when you tour with the likes of Nickelback and Hobo Stink in the mid-2000s, you know, this is how you remind me of the reason why I didn't listen to you. But that is in the past, and it's time to move forward with Chevelle. This has always been a family affair, if you're not familiar with these guys. It's uh, their first album as a duo, though. Pete and Sam um, started off with their brother Joe as their bass player. Dean Bernardini took over bass duties. Uh, he's actually their brother-in-law. He left in 2019 to focus on his family, you know, their sister. So it's tough to argue with that. But it's really cool to see where these guys ended up uh, as a duo with this record. It's just a ton of fun to listen to. I love the sci-fi element of it. Neurotius is an acronym for nothing is real. And this is a simulation. Reminds me of uh, the podcast Mormon and the Meth Head. Great podcast if you're not familiar with it. But one of the co-hosts, Jessa Reed, posits this theory that we are all part of some big alien simulation. That's what life on Earth is. Uh, interesting to think about. I don't really believe it necessarily. But for the sake of argument... And just based solely on my fascination with space, it's fun to throw the idea around. I, you know, again, I'm fascinated with space, space exploration. It's this, one of the central themes of this record. So the moment I saw song titles like Mars Simula, Sleep the Deep, Pistol Star, Gravity Heels, Wormhole, I immediately was just like, yes, give it to me. Got this sense of, I was getting ready to get in something like, you know, if you want to go old school, think Yes or Rush a little bit as far as, uh, you know, as far as the, the rock heavy um, style that's going on here. Newer bands like Muse and the Mars Volta definitely hear those influences. Dean Bernardini actually started playing bass by learning how to play whole albums, and the first album he learned how to play was a Muse record. So if you hear that influence in their music, you know it's there's no there's a very good reason why it's there. And I'm I'm a big Muse fan, so I absolutely love it. The song "So Long Mother Earth" though, uh, this album also copes with the idea of loss. And Loeffler's just really at his best lyrically on this song, managing the dichotomy of space exploration and the positive side of it, which is this unrealized potential with the human race as far as the science that we develop to get out there. And then once we're out there, what we discover. I mean, it's really mind boggling just to even think about. But then there's this sense of loss, this feeling of leaving the planet and leaving because Ostensibly, we had a really good thing going, and we screwed it up. Kind of reminds me of my girlfriend in grad school, but I digress. Musically, uh, guys are killing it as well. This album's a, a little more melodic than previous efforts. Joe Baresi was brought in, longtime producer and audio engineer. I mean, if you're not familiar with the guy, he's worked with the likes of Tool, Queens of the Stone Age, Slipknot, Nine Inch Nails, Avenged Sevenfold, The Melvins. I mean, the guy is worked with a lot of amazing bands. So, um, you know, obviously that, I read that, there's all these things that are lending to their credibility that I'm feeling foolish about not knowing. But Baresi really is bringing a lot to uh, to this record as far as the production. Uh, it gets a lot of good riff heavy rock and roll still, but there's definitely a lot of tracks that balance, you know, just you know, like single note guitar riffs and just some some cool stuff that is a little different, like I said, than, than what we've heard on, on previous records. You know, I'm really loving uh, the song Peach, the single. I, I hear a lot of Tool in Chevelle's music. A lot of people make that comparison. You know, there's times when Lothar's voice really does sound like Maynard James Keenan's. Um, and the this, this song Peach, really, I, like, I'm loving the riff. It's funny because Baresi worked on Fear Inoculum and 10,000 Days. But this album, riff-wise, as far as the Tool influence, is really reminding me of Undertow. So it's kind of like Chevelle's bringing the heavy Tool, Baresi's bringing the new kind of ethereal tool. And, and you can feel that a little bit on this record. I think it's part of the reason why I really dug it as a big time tool fan. Sorry. I'm sorry, Chevelle fans. I'm giving this a vinyl, please. I'm sorry for being such a hater throughout the years. I'm looking forward to digging through their back catalog and exploring more. This is the fancy little vinyl, please package that you can find at your record store. I hope you all enjoy listening to this record. Go and go pick that up. Um, please like this video, subscribe to my channel. Hope you find this review helpful, and we will see you next time on The Beat Sessions.